So you want to make a base drive out of an old hard drive. Yeah, we're going to show you step by step how you can do that quite easily. And then once you finish, you can do this. So to make your base drive, you will need a hard drive or maybe a few, so you can get one that you like. Uh, you're going to need probably most likely a star screwdriver to take that apart or maybe a few of those because you do the different sizes. Quite likely some other screws, um, especially a flathead for the reader. Um, various other tools and pliers are useful, cutters. Um, you're definitely going to need a soldering iron and some solder. And then, if you've got a ready-made jack lead you could use, then that's handy, otherwise you'll need to make one up. Gonna make a base drive, yeah. To make a base drive, you're gonna want a hard drive or two. Got a whole selection here, they're all slightly different, but they all should work of these ones. These larger ones are from computer towers. These small fiddly ones are from laptops. I've not tried them yet, I don't know if they work. I'm assuming they do. You can see there's some difference in these. Some of them, the disc is sunk down a bit with a bit of a ridge around the edge. Even more on this one here. It's right down deep there. It'll still work the same, but it's just a little bit harder to spin. You might hit your finger on the side there. Oh, this bit needs to come off. So here's a finished product. This one is ideal because it's raised up on the platter. It's not sunk down. I did actually saw off a couple of bits and bobs there, but really nice and easy to spin. But they will work exactly the same way. You can see it's a very simple thing, just normal audio connector on the back. All right, so now we're gonna go step by step how to make it. Most hard drives will use a star screw here, so you need a star screwdriver. Occasionally, you'll find one that uses standard uh, screwdriver screws in there, cross point screws, but almost always it'll be a star screw. So the first thing you need to do is take them all out. Now, it should just come apart. But it won't, because there's always a secret little hidden screw under this sticker. It's almost like they don't want you to take it apart. Okay, so a bit of glue holding it together there as well. Lovely shiny disc there. We're going to want to take the reader off. This is the bit that reads the information. You used to read the information. So we're going to need to take all of this mechanism off. Here we've got some very strong neodymium magnets. So you might find that screws stick to it. They can be slightly different, these bits inside. That is now off, there was only one screw there, but because the magnets are very strong, it needs a little bit of leverage there to get it off. That's a magnet in, in there. These are pretty nice and useful for quite a lot of things. They're very strong magnets. Then this bit, the actual reader. That's not particularly useful for much, but it's quite a pretty thing. So now we're getting there, expose the disc. This one is it's got a little bit of a ridge around it, but it's not too bad, fairly easy to spin. Um, I can leave all those bits there now. If you really want to, you can take all them out. There's the other magnet, the other half of the magnet underneath. It's probably worth getting that off.
definitely worth taking the magnets off because they can really mess up your phone if you happen to leave it in your pocket next to your base drive. On the back, we could leave this on, but it's gonna be a little bit easier. Here's our connections here. It's gonna be easier to get to them if we take this off. So I'm gonna take the circuit board off as well. Um, yeah, again, decoration if you want, or dispose of it responsibly. And there we have everything. I'm not sure, I think this is some sort of moisture thing. I'm take that off as well, just because otherwise it'll fall off at some point. All right, so one close up of these. These are the bits we want to connect to. There's four pins here. This is actually easier. I mean, a lot of them, there's just four blobs of solder. And this is where we're gonna take our audio out from. This is normally where the power is connected to spin the drive. Just gonna see what's under this as well. More hidden compartments. Well, nothing really. Okay. So at this point, I'm just going to bend up one, and three. If you happen to snap one of them, you can also use two and four. Works just the same. On some drives, it's there's only three pins. You just want to use the first and the third. Most of the newer ones have got four. Okay, so we've got pins one and three, quite small, let's see, we can see there's four pins, pins one and three, you could also use two and four. So we're gonna have, to, gonna have to solder onto those, so I'm just bending them up to make that a little bit easier. Okay, next is the soldering. We're gonna solder onto the power input here. I'm gonna be lazy and use um, a lead that's already soldered up, the jack leads. You could always butcher one yourself or watch another video for how to make one of those. So it's just a normal mono uh, jack connector there. It could use any audio connector really. So you can need some cable strippers, as well as different sorts of those. I'm gonna use one of the lazy sorts here. Don't need too much in the end. So with this kind of cable, instrument cable, we've got the middle core, which is centrally shielded and then stuff around that is gonna be the ground. So it's just two core instrument cable. All right. Doesn't really matter the polarity, but I'm just gonna solder onto one and three like this, onto there and onto there. This is quite fiddly. Best way to do it is to tin the leads first. So it's gonna get a little bit of solder. I'm also going to tin the two pins. So I've bent up one and three. A little bit of solder on there. A little bit of solder on there. Because we haven't got much to solder onto, definitely recommend securing the cable in place with a cable tie. They've been thoughtful enough to put some convenient little 
how to do that. Now I might be able to. chucking these things around. I'm not particularly careful with my equipment, so I like to make everything as sturdy as possible. That looks like a good connection. Try not to breathe that in. It's quite annoyingly fiddly, but then it's not SND soldering, so it's okay. I've got a nice little loop on that now. I'm gonna hook it on and give it a little squeeze. You have to be very, very careful that there's no little stray wires they're going to short circuit between, obviously. Let's have a look. Looks okay. I'm going to give it a test. Now we're going to test it out. Using a Mambo amp. Just for the quick test and then we'll try it on some bass bins. So just going to go into standard input here using the jack connector. Work alright. Okay, so that's all working fine. The connection's working fine. Uh, sometimes I put some, you could, well, if you're careful with these, sometimes I have put liquid tape over. Maybe I shouldn't mention that because I haven't got any. So we've got this cable tight. Now I'm going to tighten that up. And I'm going to put another one here just for double security. Okay, that's pretty nice. One base drive. Now we're gonna plug it into some big guns. So working fine through the Mambo amp, but what we really want is something that does big, powerful bass. So we've got a 2000 watt bass bin there. Gonna plug it in through the system and see what it can really do. Seems all right. Seems to work in. Okay, now what we're gonna do is get the original out. We're gonna try and get the wobble bass both at the same time.